has parking pilot. This is just like a golf. It has so much options. Now let's take it for a spin. Sounds a little bit like a diesel, but it's just a raw three cylinder sound. Picks up quite good, and the materials here that are used on the in the interior, pretty high quality, I must say. Three thousand RPM, shifting back. Fourth gear, 80 kilometers an hour. That's the maximum speed over here. Shifting to fifth. Now we're driving 90 kilometers an hour, 2000 RPM. The seats are quite comfortable. There's yeah, it's uh, the precision steering, I, <laughs> I would say. Not sportive, but comfortable. This car is uh, equipped with adaptive cruise control. measurements of this car is just like uh, the old Golf actually the Polo has grown it's all grown up this one liter three cylinder engine of course gonna be one of the, the yeah, best sold cars I mean engine choices for this car Because it's a small uh, displacement with a turbo, I'm sure the turbo already spools up around 1500 RPM. So even in fifth gear, driving 100 kilometers an hour, the engine turning out 2000 RPM, it will still pick up. Not bad, not bad at all. We're still driving towards the highway now, so after this we can speed up a little bit it has a nice uh, navigation system I think the overall build quality is, uh, is not, not bad. Let's speed up a little bit. Yeah, not bad at all, not for three cylinders.
five speed uh, is easy to operate. Third gear turning into a corner and try to accelerate out of it. Yeah, apart from the sound, it doesn't, <laughs> the engine doesn't mind. Let's continue driving. Turning ratio is also very good because it's still a city car, even though it doesn't mind the highway at all, it's not shy of the highway. If you work for a company in the Netherlands and you do lots of kilometers in this small country that we call the Netherlands, then this is probably one of the cars that you will get from your uh, employer. Nowadays it's rare that they uh, will give you diesel, since these uh, small petrol engines has be have become very economical. I'm now driving the car for about 10 minutes I think and it gets under your skin quite quickly it's an easy car to drive I think um, yeah it, it fits everybody there's not a big le learning curve especially if you're already used to Volkswagens you got your navigation system you got a few uh, different drive modes now it's an eco but you can also stiffen the suspension and put it in sport. Well, all that stuff for me is not really necessary, but I'm sure people will be happy with it if they want to uh, drive a little bit more sportive. Even though it's an eco mode, I can't tell that the engine is holding back. Oh, it doesn't like to... Uh, need some revs ah, lovely lovely car nice nice picks up the pace quite good In front of me you can see a Volkswagen Golf generation 4 driving and I bet this car is almost as big as that generation Golf. On my right side we have the previous generation Polo. And I used to drive the fourth generation Polo. And there's quite some quite a difference between them. Things have gone way more tacky, <laughs> tacky in the way of technology. This car is full of it. LCD screens, navigation screens, adaptive cruise control start stop system yeah in that aspect my old polo was kind of analog an analog car this is actually the first time for me driving a tsi engine and apart from the little bit raw sound um, i must say it's quite effective
we're now using six and a half liters on 100 kilometers I think that's the average and let's see right now four liter on 100 kilometers so it is pretty effective on average 6.5 liters this car is brand new not even 4,000 kilometers on the clock temperature of the oil 90, 90 degrees warnings and the current speed we're driving 85 kilometers an hour in fifth gear I couldn't say it's very quiet in here so I think on lo longer motorway journeys this car is still um, maybe not the best travel companion but when you drive 100 kilometers or 150 kilometers inside this country and don't really go to Germany or something for a longer trip then you'll be fine apart from the I think the engine is, is very sufficient, it's very very good, power output is fine, consumption figures are impressive. Um, yeah, and the noise, the insulation is, is not, not great, not great. Today is a little bit windy outside, so it's a good test, but I, I feel the car is still, you know, it's not very quiet in here. The steering wheel is pretty direct, which is which is good. The turning ratio is also nice, so it's it's still a pretty good city car. The seats are, are good. I'm used to Volvo seats, but these are not bad neither. quality is good of course there's some plastics here but what do you expect in this type of car navigation is good yeah it's it's a it's a good car now we hear the sound again we actually have to go back now we're in fourth gear again and we have a shift indicator saying that we can shift to fifth gear if we want to and now we get that diesel-y kind of noise that the engine produces. I think it's mainly because in a three-cylinder engine there's the balance is different than a four-cylinder, a five-cylinder or a six-cylinder. But it's, it's, it's funny that the petrol engine kind of produces diesel sounds. It's funny. I'm not sure if that's unique or, uh, to Volkswagen or other brands with a three-cylinder also have that kind of, uh, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't call it issue, but it's funny. It also has a compass in it, we're driving east, I can see, <laughs> funny. Yeah, it's a comfortable car. 
after this we will uh, drive into Eindhoven again and see what it can do there. Also, so what I, something I find out that the headlights has a, have an automatic setting. So there's also a sensor to check when it gets dark. The headlights go on automatically. These are the type of things that you kind of expect with cars that are new. But still, for the class, I must say the class, the Polo, the B, the, the, the B segment of cars. Yeah, this is definitely, I think, the benchmark. It's, it's a benchmark car. It has lots of technology and uh, it's business orientated. I mean, a Volkswagen is never that you say like, wow, you know, but it, it does everything good. I wouldn't say perfect, but it does everything good. Uh, it will su suit the needs of lots of buyers. Uh, with that, they have a big uh, and wide target audience. I don't think many people will hate on the Polo. The only negative I can really find is maybe the yeah maybe the road noise. I don't think this car is, is insulated very well. And also the engine I, I hear the like like a buzz, you know? It's kind of constant, especially on the 2000 RPM. It, those are actually the only things I can find <laughs> that I can bitch about. For the rest it's it's a nice car. It's comfortable. five-speed gearbox doesn't have a whole lot of feeling but it's all comfortable it's it's always a little bit vague with Volkswagen and, and Audi it doesn't really have a lot of feeling but they just choose a comfortable setting for everything the steering rack the gearbox the gearbox ratios It's peppy, but it's mainly because of the turbo. And under acceleration you hear this, this buzzing noise. But that being said, it picks up nicely. It does. My, myself, I'm a fan of bigger engines. The more cylinders, the better. But uh, Volkswagen and other brands are getting good at this. You know, just a small displacement engine with a turbo. And your consumption figures are good. And yeah, it's still peppy. It's not slow, not at all. And I think this is a better approach than um, uh, what they used to do with, uh, with the blue motion cars. That was a three cylinder diesel with a turbo. But the blue motion cars, they got the, the nickname slow motion. They were that bad. Many of those cars were tuned. Handling in the corner is also good. I must say the Swift that I used to drive even has more feeling. This is But I can't deny the effectiveness of the engine. It's effective. But steering and shifting, it's all a bit vague. But it doesn't matter if you drive, uh, <laughs> uh, if you drive inside this country, the Netherlands. It doesn't really matter. Again, fifth gear, under 2000 RPM, just listen. does sound like a diesel <laughs> anyway 
there's not much to bitch about on this car, really. I'm sure you will happily drive 50,000 kilometers in this car every year. And it's a great companion. I think it's even faster than my Volvo off the line. I really think so. A lot of time and research and development has gone into these little engines. But as a real car fanatic, it's it's um, it's lacking in passion. It is. This is really. A calculated engine and what it does is is astonishing it's uh, it's quite fast it's economical uh, so that that's that's good I don't know about the longevity of these engines I have no idea three cylinder engines I think maybe if you ha drive more than 200,000 kilometers 250,000 kilometers maybe they are uh, <laughs> due for replacement I have no idea Usually these type of cars are driven by people that use them for their work and that drive quite a lot of kilometers. And I think a lease contract can be one or two or three years. Let's say for instance you drive 50,000 kilometers a year, then the engine should be able to you know, drive 200,000 kilometers without a sweat. And when it's a company car, I don't really care too much about the longevity of, of it. I mean, when the lease contract is, uh, is stopped, it, it's ended, you get a new car. And these types of cars, maybe they are sold. I would really do some research on, uh, on the longevity of three cylinders before buying such a car. Because everything is just calculated. Everything should function within the lease contract and you know as soon as the contract is uh, is finished Is it still a good car? Can it still handle uh, another another 100,000 kilometers? No idea about it. No idea Gonna take the exit. Thanks for watching this uh, review, this point of view review of the Volkswagen Polo, and we hope to see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.